Hello, this is Lisa Christensen. I am a contributing artist at the Fine Art Cafe Academy and I wanted to share with you some fun ways that I like to use Brusho in my greeting cards and uh, to promote my class a little bit, but you're going to get a free lesson and I think that's always fun. So if you have Brushos, you're in for a treat because this is a fun way that I like to make a whole bunch of card panels. I have a sheet that's probably, oh, I would say this is about seven and a half eight by six so lots of room to cut you know two maybe three card panels to uh, make some watercolor cards but you can get some really pretty backgrounds using brusho and so because it's fall and i just love fall and almost like that you know november feel i made my november uh, brusho landscape palettes i have all my colors right here right next to my, this brush you just can't see them on the camera um but but i wanted to see kind of how I, the mood of these colors so uh mood is really important when you're looking at painting and i want the colors to match the mood and the atmosphere that i'm being inspired by so this is my little guide to my to my <laughs> to my process all right so what you're going to want is you're going to want one like two two paint brushes I would call this a large and this is a medium and then I have one more just in case I need it sometimes I do sometimes I don't but I'd rather have more paint brushes than enough um, water I just use my water in a quart ball size uh, jar some sort of palette that has a well in it this is just a regular um, palette that you can pick up at most craft stores and I use it for my brushes all the time you can tell some of it's a little bit stained blue turquoise especially gets stained but that's okay I've used this for years and it still looks pretty good for it being plastic um, so the palette is just there if I need it most of the time I won't need it so I'll just have it right over here and so let's get started I'm gonna play with when I make brush -o landscapes, when I make my color plays, um, I have a couple general ideas in mind. The first idea, the first concept, or the first thing is I like to start with my sky. And my sky is almost never blue like you would think, turquoise. Um, it's almost always a yellow or a um, red. I always like warm skies. I think landscapes... A brush of landscapes in a warm sky like a like either at dusk or at dawn uh, it really just brings out a really pretty mood and so if I'm looking here I'm actually gonna I'm gonna go with terracotta and some new gamboge I think that will look really pretty and I'm gonna start with new gamboge because yellow is the lightest value on the color wheel so and I'm just gonna wet my paper. I, you saw me wet my paper before, but I'm gonna really make sure that it's wet, pretty wet. And then I'm just gonna go on and I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit. Um, I do this a lot, I call this color play because I never know what colors are gonna really work um, until I start playing with my colors. And that's the fun part of, well, painting. Really, I think that's why Van Gogh was so well um, received is because he played with his colors like you have I have no doubt he played with his colors and and enjoyed for him it was a therapeutic process just as much as it was producing art um, okay I really like this I'm gonna clean off this edge because I don't want any edges clean my brush off and now I'm gonna go with my terracotta and I'm just gonna I always think that the top part should have some middle and then I'm going to go back up to that and I'm just going to I'm just going to let it play now I don't have my paper taped down some artists like to tape down their paper and I think that's fine um, I am not one of those artists so you'll never see me but I you know I feel really confident in my abilities to hold my paper the way I do so if you are still kind of new to watercolor you know I taped down my paper for a long time and now I'm totally over it now I just want to be able to the paper holding the paper gives you a lot more um, freedom I think now and I have a easel where you can you know tilt it to one side or another but I still find that holding my paper and tilting it the way I want really helps um, 
the the I the watercolor society artist that I have been taught by is Alexis Levine. Uh, she's actually in South Carolina, and she she very rarely um, does that. That uh, puts her paper on tape or staples it to a board because she likes the flowy part of it. And then by the time you're done with that, you're able to you know be more detailed. Uh, but I'm, right now I'm just splashing water. Uh, if you are wanting to learn more i have a beautiful wonderful class that i spent like a lot of time i have over eight hours of content to learn on how to use brush o in a greeting card class but i also give a lot of good content for watercolor artists that want to do uh watercolor cards and I think that even you could use this. You don't have to use brush for this. I, I am loving this guy. I took my time. I added the the reds and the yellows to where I want it. It looks very warm. It almost looks like I could make it into a beach. But I'm going to make this more into a just a just a like a field almost. Like I want the sky to be center point, and then I'm going to add just a tiny bit of. Oh, I'm going to add just a field so it's like a cornfield at the bottom. Now, if I was less intuitive, this is a very intuitive process, I would have probably drawn on my paper and, and made that look wonderful. But I wanted to share with you ways that I like to use colors. So um, here we go. Okay, so now I get to decide what green I want to use and probably some dark gray because I really want that contrast. But I'm going to start with my moss green because if I look, I know I would like some gray and maybe some olive green, but moss green is one of my go-tos for uh, middle value. So I'm going to go with that and I'm actually going to sprinkle it onto my palette. I just need a tiny bit. I don't know if you saw how much that is, but it's, it's a tiny little bit. Brush-O will, the less you use, the more you'll... <laughs> less is more when it comes to brush oh end of story so i did put some of that on my palette but i'm also going to sprinkle some olive green so i'm sorry moss green and again i i make like two or three different color plays in my class so you really can see uh what i mean by this but um now I'm just getting the brush all wet a little bit. You can also use a spray bottle and that would work. But because I just want it to be very loose and fluid right now, I'm not using a spray bottle. But a spray bottle would make it kind of just burst the colors, which is kind of fun. Okay. Okay. Now I can go in here and get this really beautiful green and I can just add some greens where I want it so with landscapes I like to add like a dark almost like a edge you know where the tree line meets the sky and I'm letting the painting speak like I see this hill happening so I'm going to just make that into a hill and paint some more and this would be probably what I would call my first layer, but um, and since it's still pretty wet, I can add some more. Now I'm going to go into my olive green. This is the darker green. And I'm just going to sprinkle that on. And this is all done with playing with color. I'm not. I, I'm letting the painting speak to my to me. And you do that by patiently waiting to see how the colors interact with each other like I see a whole bunch of pretty colors that I don't want to fuss with so I'm going to let it be now if you are not a if you like to play with color but you don't like to draw there are stamps out there that will make your life a hundred times easier I like to buy silhouette stamps and paint a scene and and make scenes that way There's so many opportunities to create art, even if you don't feel like you're creative. And right now I'm just kind of going in and playing with my, this moss green that I have. I think 
This is going to look more like a field. Okay, now I like that. Now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to call it done in just a second, because I, I like having a dark value. I'm going to take this gray, maybe. I just got water in it. That's never good. You do not want water to get into your brush though, because then it will not sprinkle out like it should. But now it is, and I think I didn't get enough water in it to make it matter. But you don't want to get water in your... You don't want a whole lot of water in your powder. You just want to keep your water away from it. But I think this will work for what I need it to do. Okay. So now I really like this little hill thing that I started. So I'm going to just kind of paint it. And then I'm going to make that edge just kind of disappear. So it still looks like it's in the distance. And then there is a watercolor play. So check out my class. I have a lot of free tutorials on the Academy as well. And it's not just on landscapes. I have a brush floral class that's really fun. I took pictures and showed you exactly how I interpret those pictures from my garden and then made them into a, a, a painting. Uh, this is just one color play. So I think that if I wanted to, I could cut my card into one and two spots. And then I have enough space to add uh, like a, a bird stamp or maybe even a tree stamp um, with a sentiment saying, you know, happy birthday or sympathy or something. And I, I have a beautiful card ready to go. Uh, so this is just one way that I like to, to use my watercolor to brighten somebody's day and if you have any questions i'm here the academy has a customer support service so anytime you have any questions or you need help accessing a class we are there for you i check my email often to see if you have any questions about the class material but we go through a bunch of ways to use brusho in your card making we also i also show you how to use stencils and other stamping techniques to make cards uh, to give to your friends and family and possibly to sell i have a couple students that are selling their watercolors and they are just having a wonderful time so anyways i hope you have fun painting and keep practicing with those colors because that's what sets you apart from the other artists and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.